And, you know, I feel like this is a good point because you mentioned cold shower. Good point to kind of break into both the, the science, of the difference between, you know, cryotherapy versus cold shower for, or versus full body immersion. And also, you, you know, your experience with those and how maybe people can who they can't uh, or they haven't gotten into uh, full body immersion yet. If they want to get into <laughs> cold showers, what would that protocol be? And I guess your thoughts on that whole matter. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan and a supporter of getting cold in all different ways, even if that includes going on a walk outside mm-hmm. when it's cold. Just like expose the body yeah. uh, and the system to different stresses. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, cryotherapy is interesting. It You get a lot of like topical benefits. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not as deeply therapeutic as full body immersion. That's the nice thing about um, taking an actual ice bath is you get the hydrostatic pressure of the water on the body. Mm -hmm. And so you're fully submerged. You're activating the vagus nerve because of that full submersion. uh, And then you have the pressure of the cold water on the body, right? Mm -hmm. Very similar to like putting an ice pack around you versus cryotherapy. They're just blowing cold air on your body. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the same way too with uh, with cold water. I had somebody ask me uh, over direct message. You know, they were trying to stimulate uh, contrast therapy, and they were like, you know, how long should I do cold cold water on the shower before switching to hot water? And I was like, well, I was like, you, it's not quite uh, simulated the same way for both you know the heat exposure and the cold exposure. Uh, but you know, I know there are still some ways that people have talked about that you can. I guess, emulate the same benefits with cold showers. Uh, what would that look like for, for someone getting started, let's say, today? Yeah, if you're new to cold therapy, definitely start in the cold shower. Um, turn the water to, like, a little bit above freeze all the way yeah. cold, right? <laughs> and just get acclimated to it. Yeah. It's not like start it's, small. it doesn't have to be extreme. You yeah. can start with warm water and keep dialing it down and building up a tolerance. Um, and when you become... Um, more acclimated to the cold, keep making it colder and colder. You can Mm -hmm. also contrast it going cold, hot, cold, hot. Again, what you're trying to do is build up a tolerance to the cold. And so in order to build up a tolerance, you start small. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't have to go freezing cold at once and you're getting the benefits between 50 and 60 degrees anyways. Yeah. So it's not like you have to drop down to like 39 degrees. Well, that's, that's one thing I've noticed too, is I think there is this and, you know, social media does this with, with running, it does it with uh, lifting, it does it, with, it does it with really anything, is, you know, there's that shock factor, right, or that, you know, search to go, I feel like, viral or get a lot of attention whenever you can do something extreme, right, and so there are people that want to, um, you know, go to the extreme, do something wild just for the sake of, of suffering in general, to, to look cool, to get attention, um, when you mentioned, and, you know, you do a great job, um, or, or brand does overall on uh, Ice Barrel social media with, educating hey you don't have to do you know 33 degrees you don't have to be doing these extreme things that you know some people can do and still do safely uh but a lot of the benefits you're still going to get in that 50 to 60 degrees you know you can still have minor suffering and appreciate the benefits of cold exposure you don't have to go you know all into this extent you know you know immediately right 